Shalom. Welcome to what I believe will be the very last chapter of understanding Hebrew verb structure. Remember, we are working in the imperfect tense, and I hope by now you are familiar and you have memorized the prefixes and suffixes, which never change regardless of the vinyam. Today we will cover the pu'al, the hofal, and the hitpa'el. In the previous video, I thought I had not done a perfect for the hitpa'el, but in fact I had. It's also with the pu'al and hofal. Name was just cut off, so I didn't catch it when I was looking over the previous video. So the pu'al, you remember, is the passive form that's associated with the pl. There are not a whole lot of pu'al imperfect to choose from. In fact, the Blue Letter Bible indicates there are only 93, and actually 22 of those are all associated with the same root. So here is a full conjugation chart for a full root where none of the letters are going in and out. So you can get a solid picture of what it looks like. So in this case, we see that under the first letter of the root, in this case the dalit, we're going to see that kubuts. So we have a du bar, to du bar, to du bri, and so on. I did find one example of this verb in Tanakh. It's in Song of Songs 8.8. Eight. Talking about the young woman, young sister, it says, What will we do? Man ase for our sister, Yom she yidu bar ba, that she is spoken for. In other words, somebody has asked her hand. So it's a passive form. Somebody has asked for her. She's not doing it. So that's a third person masked singular. In Isaiah, here's an example of second person masculine plural, indicating that the people will be eaten by the sword because Yahweh has spoken. So we have this t uk lu. One of the characteristics, which I hadn't spoken of at all, but it, we'll see in the next part that it's a bit critical, is that in the PL and the PUAL, in all forms, there's a doggish in the middle vowel. And that will become crucial when we begin to look at the HOFA. Here are two forms of the verb kasa to cover. In this case, it is to be covered. Speaking of the unborn child, it says, V'choshech shmo yechuseh. In darkness, his name is covered. Kasa is a verb that ends in hey, and so you're going to see the change in the vowel under the samech. In Genesis 7.19, plural, third masculine, plural form of the same verb, and you see that the hey is missing. It follows the normal rules for verbs that end in hey. Talking about the waters of the flood, they came, v'yechusu kol heharim hagvohim. And all the high mountains were covered. It's a passive form. And this is the verb of the 22 repetitions in, in just these two different forms. He was born or they were born. In Judges 18, 29, we see that they called the name of the city Dan. In the name of Dan, their father, Asher Yulad Israel, who was born to Israel. In Psalm 90, verse 2, the plural form, Beterem Harim Yuladu, before the mountains were born or brought forth. So that gives you a brief overview of the Pua moving to the Hofa. Again, a pretty slim set of choices here. The Hofa imperfect is only used 178 times, slightly better. So here we see that the kibbutz appears under the prefix. Remember the pu'al, it's under the first letter of the root. Here it's under the prefix. Ushlach, tushlach, tushlachi. And we have gone over this root in the other tenses. So here are some examples of that root being used. In Ezekiel 16.5, a second person feminine singular. You see the prefix and the suffix. Speaking of the birth of the people, he addresses actually Jerusalem, and on the day of her nativity, no one cared for her. And you were cast out, you were thrown into the field. Again, it's conjugated in the imperfect, but we read it in the perfect because of the conversive vowel. In Isaiah 34, 3, we have a third person masculine plural speaking of 
the fury, the indignation of the Lord, the things that will happen, and their dead bodies will be thrown out, presumably at the graves, and it goes on to speak of the smell of the corpses and so on. A bit of a nasty business. The most complete set of examples I could find are from the verb yaval. It's usually used in hefeel, meaning to lead or to bring along. So in the hofal, it will be the passive form, to be brought, to be led. Now, this is a verb that begins with yud, and you know they have special rules. We reviewed them in the participle and in the perfect tense, but the yud changes to the vav. So in this case, we see the shuru of the hofal immediately after the prefix for the person, and the yud drops away. In Job 10.19, he's expressing the thought that he wished he had basically never been born or he had been carried directly from the womb to the grave. Mi beten la kever uval, I would have been brought. In a passage that we all know, Isaiah 53, 7, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, but he did not open his mouth. Like a sheep to the slaughter, uval, he was led. In Psalm 45, verses 14 and 15, we have two different forms. Speaking of the bride, Nur kamot tuva lamela. Bride, she will be brought in her embroideries to the king. The tulot acharecha, uh, the virgins uh, behind her, reotecha, her friends. And here's a, a participle form, muvaot. You can recognize here's the mem, here's the u of the hofal. They are being brought with her. In verse 15, speaking of the friend, to Valna, they will be brought. Third person, feminine, imperfect. A very rare occurrence. In Isaiah 55, 12, we have a second person, masculine, plural, to Valun. Now, there's other places where we've talked about this. Nun, it's a remnant of a former form. It's not uncommon. Uh, has no real meaning here. Perhaps you know the song. You shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. Finally, in Job 21.30, the, the third person masculine plural, speaking of the wicked, they will be brought out in the day of wrath. Moving on to the Hitpa'el, we see that the prefix, the personal prefix for each person, is affixed to the tav. Remember in the past tense, all the forms began with hey tav. All these forms begin with the personal prefix and the tav. So you have et halech, tit halech, tit halchi, so on. So Psalm 116 verse 9 gives us an example in the first person. Et halech l'tnei Yehovah ba'atzot hachim who will walk before the Lord in the lands of the living. In Genesis 5.22, see about Enoch, that Enoch walked with God. That's a third person, masculine, singular. Here is a third person, masculine, plural, from Psalm 105, verse 13. Speaking of the early wanderings of the people, and they went from one kingdom to another people group. In Zechariah 6, 7, again, we have the feminine plural. Uh, if you look back up, you see that it is talking about the spirits, and that's why it's feminine plural. And he said, go and walk throughout the earth, and they walk throughout the earth. So the first form, the hithalchu, is actually a command form. And then we have the reversing va of the future, which tells us what has already happened, and they did walk throughout the earth. Appreciate your time and patience as we've gone through all these. It's not 100% uh, covered, but I hope that overall this has been somewhat useful to you. I actually started the initial verb workshop four years ago. It was a, a course class that I did online for some Torah readers. And then uh, in May of last year, I really dug into really breaking it down and we have come to the end of that. So now I'm going to pursue some other things. Of course, there'll still be more videos about different topics. If you're interested in anything special, please let me know. I pray that as you continue to study God's Word, that He reveals many things to you as we wait for the return of Yeshua.
Tasimita Enayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draw nigh. Shalom, shalom.